people love to do that which is not correct and they go back to look upon those things which is not at all worthy to be considered dear brethren this great unique spiritual life which has been given for us it is our life it is our mind without this great polity of privileges given to us we don't have anything else on this earth to be certainly thought of but many men don't love this truth the sad part in our lives dear brethren in christ though the wisdom and knowledge of god are been treasured as a deposit so that among these gentiles the name of christ should be absolutely glorified not just his name but his above his name his word the name of christ was to be glorified in the old testament saints and they did it but for us when we come it is about his word above his name that we should be certainly glorifying him so that no man should beguile you should deceive you and corrupt the thoughts of your mind like the way how satan corrupted therefore apostle paul tells i have to give you as a chaste virgin to christ and be aware about these things because we have been united in love so that the full assurance of his understanding should be made known to you the very words of christ which are been penned for us in the mystery doctrine of the church age if we would do thesis on it and study i think this entire world will not be enough to fulfill to full to fully explain even one single word or even one word what apostle paul has spent through his through the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit for our admonition about this doctrine this entire world is not enough though we can go on to explain because so much of information has been given for us in colossians 2 2 where we read that you may be consoled used of for every kind of calling to a person who is intended to produce a particular effect or a comfort so that you could be having that particular effect of mgg in your lives when you grow up in the knowledge of bible doctrine by taking the truth as number one priority so that being united together through rebound and in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit in love and the reason for what you have been united together in love in all the riches of his full assurance in the fullness and the completion of understanding so that now the understanding synesis which is nothing but the insight the critical faculty of how to evaluate circumstances so that the critical faculty into the own realization so that the clear and exact knowledge so that you can avoid error by not falling yourselves into the deceiving nature of satan this error of deceiving nature of satan which is transforming itself to become the angels of light which is transforming itself by becoming to be the false pastor teachers today as apostle paul could quote in second corinthians love into teachers that time when he said there were some false apostles now we can say the false pastor teachers the kleptes the lestes the mistotes the thupos the canapes the tiflos and the sheruras oriented pastors and how can we know them we can know them by their works how can be their works the bona fide gifted pastor teacher following the example of our lord and savior jesus christ from chapter number luke 19 verses 46 and 47 to make once again from the den of thieves the house of prayer of god he taught there daily the word of god the first example in revelation 2 we find becoming god synagogue as satan synagogue in revelation 2 and 3 again we find satan's throne being established in the synagogue of satan again though it is the synagogue of god and third time we find again satan's copulation point that's what we can literally translate from the greek 
What does Satan do there? Copulate. For what? To produce false pastor teachers. What do they do? They don't teach to you the word of God daily from the original languages of the scriptures. That's what they do. How can you know that? Because we find in the word of God the faithful, bona fide, gifted pastor teachers who come along their duty is to see that they warn every man, they preach every man, and they make them to be mature enough by passing the examination in Christ. And to do that, it is not just he that is laboring, but the one mightily laboring through him under the dunamis of energia power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That's the great work. That great energy and power does for believers since now it has become Satan's synagogue, Satan's throne, and Satan's copulation point, and producing false pastor teachers. We can know them by their works, because the bona fide gifted pastors, following the example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, will come over here to teach to you the word, morning one hour and evening one hour. That's the tithe of your time that you need to pay back to my Lord. And they teach it daily. In those 40 years of wilderness, our Lord said for them, their garments were not torn out from their legs, they were collapsed. But what they were, they were faithful enough. The garments which could be used figuratively represents even for the flesh. They did not become sick, they did not become have the reasons for giving their age old problems. But what did they do? They went along faithfully, faithfully, faithfully to take their manna. Because without that manna, they cannot survive, right? How much more it should be in this great and unique dispensation of the church age that we come over here to take the spiritual manna every day. Doesn't your inner man need the doctrine? And you think you can replace doctrine in your soul through the spirit by following some moral legal standards? Thinking that you are able to bribe my Lord? You can do that? Shame upon you. You are not only a traitor to the Lord, but you are deceiving your own self. Every believer ought to be a debtor for Christ, for his gospel, Romans 1, 14 and 15. But in every believer's life, the verse number 15 of Romans chapter 1 may not be fulfilled because they are not living a life that should be the real debtor for the gospel of God. The Yale, Harvard and Dartmouth universities which have come along, the primary goal of those universities was to see, to train those qualified men in the original languages of the scriptures and send them as missionaries to the entire parts of the earth. And they did it. They have their logos to teach or the ambition of their universities to tell, the mottos to tell. The church, Christ, light and truth, a voice in the wilderness. Why these quotations? Because they were debtors. But, what are, but for what are we to the debtors? To our flesh, to our belly, to our glory, to be in our shame. To mind earthly things. Be aware about these things, dear brethren. You can know them by their works. Only when you have wisdom and knowledge being grown from milk to bread and from bread to strong meat. And through the practical sense of your understanding of the spiritual realm, you are able to discern by their works. Whether they are truly bona fide gifted of God or whether they have come to the ministry for their own belly. Happy are they who certainly seek for the truth because they shall be filled in the hunger of righteousness of God. And that great hunger of righteousness in the mind of Christ is to prove the standards which the word says for us. What are those standards? Secluded sound Bible doctrine. That's the standard of Proverbs to summon. Secluded sound Bible doctrine. Apart from that, the Word of God doesn't know any other standard, whether you believe it or not. The miracles, the healings, the tongues crowd, which the people are believing today and practicing them to be as a charismatic gospel in the prosperity realm have certainly not sought the book of the Bible of the Word of God. 
as the Martin Luther's Wingley and Calvin came along to fight and to give us this freedom what we are enjoying today by holding our Bible in our hands being translated into more than 2,000 languages the exact manner, the procedure, how the Roman Catholics, the popery, the greatest evil that could come upon the Christendom today. They did not teach the truth. They kept apart the word. The Martin Luther fought and protested so that now the Bible should be given in our hands. So that for what? Even after several years of this 500, 500 years we can call because 15th century was the revival what they bought being targeted as a protestant though in this 500 years till the thousand to, till the point of 2000 what we are going now even you have been now closing the bible in the same footprints of the roman catholicism why did this reformation movement bought for us this great bible in our hands so that now you can know god and to become debtor for his gospel not that use as your Bible under your head when you have bad dreams. Not to use that Bible to just carry as a weight upon your chest or in your pocket when you're going to the church weekly once. After the work has been done, place it in a shell and keep it preserved till you get back and dust it off and take it for the next week again to the church. <laughs> How much aliens you are towards the plan of God. The attitude of your life, which is not at all right. You have to know the serious conditions that are happening today in the church age. Satan's throne, Satan's copulation point and Satan's synagogue. When Satan copulates with the people, though it is a synagogue of God and becoming as a synagogue of Satan, do you not think you will produce false pastor teachers? And how do you make them to know? What are you? By your works. The word says, Acts chapter 20, verses 26 through following, till to the verse number 32. I have not sent to declare the entire counsel of God. Weepingly, three years, day and night, I taught you the word. So that now I commend you to the grace and to the word of God, so that now when I depart, ravenous wolves will come, but be careful, disown them by the word of God. What did a pastor teacher do? Following the footprints of Apostle Paul or following the footprints of the sons of Sceva? Following the footprints of Simony? Following the footprints that which is absolutely walking in the realm of Balaam? or Korah, or Dathan. Where are you going today? Are you really the bona fide gifted pastor teacher? Then do his work faithfully. Whether they could be hearers or not, do it faithfully. Whether they love it or not, do it faithfully. Don't seek to search your life to impress others, to please others. So that you could be great enough to prove to the world that you are pleasing them, but to Christ my Lord you are grieving him. Know ye not that our Lord is a surety, as a sign, that we will be getting MGT, maximum glorification for Christ in this church age. Because of that we have been given great, high and lofty polytema privileges which the church has been enjoying from the past and the reformation movement has brought us to enlightenment that this mystery doctrine should be communicated in our pulpits. But what are we doing today? Still teaching like babies in the moron. Teaching doctrine for whom? To morons. The pastors themselves have not grown up. They haven't realized the serious condition of this mystery doctrine which they have to teach. And in 2 Timothy 4.2 when Apostle Paul writes Kerusoton Lagan, he's telling for them the Colossians 4, 2 through 6. Teach them the mystery doctrine which is their life. 
in fact even when we go to look and understand each and every word in the original language of the scriptures i knew that this entire world is not enough to replace the riches of glory of god through the daily edification of the complex of your soul by daily growing up in the knowledge of bible doctrine it is not enough the way how beautifully our lord has designed to imagine far less you can think the material prosperity is much more needed for us than anything else on this earth Dear brethren, life is too short. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. Don't waste your time. Time is precious. The Kairos movements in the Kronos time. Since the days are evil, you know very well to be walking like wise men. Among the midst of this unwise, menacious, oriented, clothed men who are of to my Lord much waxed and much discomfitured. But you are not so, you need to learn Christ. Not to kill your life to become aliens, but in return to become the true witnesses of his truth. In spite of all the odd infinite circumstances we have. Because our Lord God Almighty is the one who is going to deliver us from all of those things. When we pass down the examination of Abraham. The way how Abraham was being called a friend when he gave his dear beloved son. Not hesitatingly. But went along to give a sacrifice to the Lord because he knew he was able to raise him up. Likewise, every believer now being called as a friend in Christ has a life to be, to be there. Though there is a point of death in your home, you come to learn the word of God and prove that you love my God more than anything else. And the pastor teachers who love to take, even though there is a death in their home, to teach the word of God every day faithfully. What a right and true privilege it is for us. Our Lord calls us to be his friends. But have we proven our friendship? Have we proven our integrity, our loyalty? If you aren't, put to test my Lord till the days of your life you have on this earth to come and study the word of God every day. That's it. Nothing else than that. This could be named as second part today in my date because the first part was being recorded for 44 minutes and this will be the continuation of it. So consider over these things, ponder over these things, and learn the word of God. Nothing more is important on this earth than anything else on this earth. Because it is only the word. This earth is earth, goes back to the dust from where it came. But the word of the Lord alone shall reign, though the heaven and earth will perish. So think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Today is a lot of disturbances because of the rain and some of the wind. I could not get my jerkin as well. But tomorrow we shall come back in the grace of God to learn much and more to divine, divine illumination of his truth. And this tape of 20 minutes which has been recorded, be it is the continuation of the previous tape of the first 44 minutes. So we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, you shall have the eternal truth. This eternal truth is for very simple for you. Believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry us on Lagan, herald the word in season out of season, because of the great diamond from my witnesses, where you have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in building Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, not worry besides nature, the entire angel cross will be witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly and faithfully divide the word of the Lord, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you go, you decide. But remember to carry Sothon Lagan, this great mystery doctrine of the church age, in whom are hid all the wisdom and the knowledge of God, given for us graciously before the foundation of the world, being made known for us now. In the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone, being preserved and kept for our work. To praise him till we have the last breath in our lives. By reaching MGG, maximum glorification of God and fulfilling that great protocol plan of God given to us in Christ. To him belongs all things and all things in all for Christ alone.
our Lord, our Savior. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, we are very grateful for this great and unique privilege that was given to fellowship through the word. Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, challenge us by this message. We thank you for each and everything as such, as such you have told, Lord. And everything give thanks unto thee. Father, what else we can ask? You are the control of everything. Before our word is upon our tongue, Father, you know very well. Once again, we know where this pulpit to daily teach the word of God in the original language of the scripture, Sovereign Lord. The pain of our heart, the way how we have sent those bona fide gifted pastors who could mind to teach the word of the Lord every day, every day, every day, and emphasize the truth. Much more wisdom and much more knowledge has been hidden in thy word. Help us to dig it out faithfully and teach it clearly for thy grace so that people can be knowing the riches of Christ, which is Christ our Lord, our hope of glory in this church. And in this church age, we are able to give for every believer when we reach the maximum glorification of God, the plausious riches of Christ, the grace upon grace. In Christ's matchless gracious name we pray, Sovereign Lord, may Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten us.